What up, people? Welcome back to the Boom Boom Room. Another Sunday, another episode. This week, we are fortunate to have Brian Penny Collins, the head coach of Tennessee State University, Nashville's own, White's Creek's own, Belmont's own, the city's own. You know what I mean? So this would be a good interview. This would, this would be um, eye-opening to some that don't know Penny, that's able to reach back, and even to the ones that do know him. You know, we, we'll see if it's a couple things in there that we can dig out the bag to get you a little bit more in tune to what we have here in the city, who was able to come back to the city and coach, you know, um, right here with ladies' roots. And um, let, let, let's start it off with this video, people. Let's, here, here we go. My story is one that's interesting because I really feel like I got it out the mud. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me bring them in the right way. You know, we got theme music on every Boom Boom Room show to get the energy started and get it right. Let me bring them on the right way, people. Like old six, let me rewind to like old bricks, Blake Street and all the coke go in to Jackson. The one, the only, Ryan. I felt it was only right, man, to bring you in on the city's own paper, the city paper. You know what I mean? <laughs> Knowing that, you know, we got Marcus going up there with you guys next year. And you being the city's own, you embodying really in a sense what we are here in Nashville. The grit, the grind, no handouts, dedication, determination, all of it wrapped in one. You know what I mean? So we, we, we're glad to welcome you here in the Boom Boom Room, man. Man, you know, I'm excited to be here at Google Room, man. Thanks for having me, and I'm just looking forward to, to having this day with you, man. I couldn't even sleep last night looking forward to getting, in, getting on here with you today, dog. Most definitely, most definitely. So we got a couple people joining in. We got shout-out to Coach Jordan, shout-out to Dante Jones, what up, D. Davis. People will be joining in as we're going on, man. This is going to be a, um, a, um, an interview. We're going through the life of Penny and seeing, you know, where he came from, his obstacles. And um, focusing on a lot more of him behind the scenes, you know. Um, this is this is your second year. You did two years at TSU already, right? Yep, yep. Two this years completed. Year. Two years completed. So we know Penny on the basketball court, working the sidelines, fresh from head to toe. Jay's on. He's something to come different specs on him. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm peeping the whole swag, you know. <laughs> and you represent it real, real well. So now we 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 taking that lay off. And we're getting back behind the scenes to behind the penny. We're going to peel the copper back, in it, if you will. You know what I mean? So you dive straight in. Tell me. Cool. Tell, oh, there you go. That's, that's what we need to hear. Tell me where you from, Penny, and how you got to the point to Nashville. Well, you know, I was born, born and raised in West Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, grew up in Memphis. You know, obviously, Coach Collins, Mr. OG, he was the uh, high school coach. Down at down at Central High School, and uh, we moved to Nashville because he got his, he got the job at Pearl Cone, mm -hmm. and uh, where he went, where he went to school, you know, he went to Pearl High, so you know he came back home, kind of like I ended up, and uh, you know he was coaching at Pearl Cone, and he actually did a year here uh, while we were still in Memphis. I was about in the fourth 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 grade, and then so I spent fourth grade in Memphis, and he stayed here uh, his first year at Pearl, and then the family joined uh, him, and I moved to Nashville, and I was in fifth. Great, man. And that's, that's where really all kind of got started from. <laughs> okay, you get here in fifth grade. Funny thing is, I, I thought, because Coach, Coach Collins, your, your, your pops played for Pearl High, right? 
Right. So it, it came full circle. I, didn't, I never knew that. So I, I, was, I was a little. I knew I knew he played the pearl. I but I don't know why it didn't dawn on me that it came full circle for you in the same similar fashion. But okay, so you get here to Nashville from Memphis. You did elementary mm-hmm. down there in West Tennessee. I mean, and now you're up here in Nashville. What was your first stop? Um, was I was it? at Aiken Elementary School. Aiken Elementary. Okay. Aiken, Aiken Elementary. Elementary. Playing in uh, in, playing hooping in the neighborhoods. Right. Uh, ended up joining the Northwest Northwest YMCA. Hey, Amen. You know what I'm saying? Shout That's out to really Northwest Y, man. Bring a lot of people on Saturday mornings up there. Yeah. That's, That's where, where really all got started. Northwest YMCA. And ended, ended up meeting my backcourt late house on there. That's, That's when me and him kind of got our relationship going. And, and uh, we, we played, played on the AU team called Northwest. YMCA stars, was basically all the best players at the Y. Okay. Played on the A team. But I didn't play at the Y. So when I came to the trials, they're like, hey, who's this dude? You know, he was a new kid. You know what I'm saying? I was the only kid that didn't play in the Y that was trying out. And, uh, and for that first trial, I didn't let him know right away what time it was. Hey, that's what it's about. So I'm going to make a mistake in your claim, really. That was you supposed to do. Okay, so. Where got started. Before you get, before we go past there. Where did you fall in love with basketball? I understand your, your pops played Pearl High. Pearl High had pray, all you yeah. viewers that's listening in the Boom Boom Room. Pearl High had great tradition in basketball. So did North High, like Cone. Like it, the, the history in basketball was rich, uh, in, in, in the state of Nashville was rich, in the city of Nashville was rich. So what gave you your love? When did you know you had that love? Was it straight out like history age, your son, or being around the game, or did it all of a sudden hit you? Uh, I believe that it hit me when I was in, in, growing up in Memphis. You know, I grew up watching uh, Penny Hardaway, my namesake, uh, Tony Harris, Robert O'Kelly. Uh, those are guys that I grew up watching. Uh, I do remember my dad's team having players like Randy Carter who went on to play for University of Minnesota. And, uh, like, I was telling this story not too long ago. Like, I literally, the thing that stands out my, my mind was them old gyms in Memphis. They had their old wood floors. And, you know, that, you remember that atomic bomb? Yeah. <laughs> You drop your nigga out of there. Orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that's when I really first fell in love with basketball, man. I, I was like, I want to be like, be like them dudes and and hoop like that, hoop on this stage and them big crowds in Memphis City basketball. That was uh, my first love. Okay. That that that's 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 what's up, man. And, and all you viewers, especially high school kids, college kids, old people, whoever listening, if you are associated with anything basketball, you know about them old gyms. It's a different smell when you walk in there. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's because of what he just described, man. It's a smell that you'll never forget. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you always get it. You always know. Just like people here say they, they hear the popcorn popping and stuff like that. You know that smell when you walk into one of the gyms. You know what I'm saying? So, Northwest Y, you jumped on the scene. This was you in, uh, what, sixth grade? Going into sixth? Yep. Fifth and sixth grade, yeah. Okay, and that was your, mm-hmm. that was your AU journey right there. And, uh, Yep, yep, yep. That's that's, that's kind of where I got the basketball community finding out who I was. You know, I was playing our Aiken Elementary team. We had a basketball team in Aiken, but we played small schools like St. Paul and St. Uh, not we didn't play St. Pies, but uh, no, this little this little Christian schools basically we would play. And so that, that side of the town knew who I was, but uh, you know, besides the people that I would go practice with in Pearl, we'll get to that in a minute. But usually, usually it was all. It was all started at the Northwest YMCA. That's where it really kind of got where we got rolling. Right. So the community center played a big part in you coming up here and being able to adapt to what was going on, being able to make your name in that situation, and and, and also being comfortable. So in the who do you are in a whole new city. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We um, park was right around the corner from where I. Where I lived, mm-hmm. so I would have my friends to pick me up, like Jason Goose, Carl Brown, these dudes from the neighborhood. They would pick me up in the sixth grader, and I'd go up there and play, you know, with grown men in the sixth grader. And that's and I just lived. I stayed, I stayed at Harlem Park. I was playing inside or outside, you know. And then, and then, like all of a sudden, I'm playing and playing. I'm wearing this Penny Hardaway jersey every day. People started calling me Little Penny, uh, based off this that, you know. What I'm saying I'm crossing over. I really kind of played more like AI to be real, because right. I was short right. that time. But I was trying to all the crossover moves, and everybody was like, oh, that's Lil Penny, like Lil Penny the doll. So that's yeah. kind of where all this started, man. Harmon Park, 
Yeah, YMCA, YMCA playing, playing in the neighborhood. So you are you are involved in going to the community centers. So I want to I want people to know in the Boom Boom Room the the impact that community centers, boys and girls clubs, all these things, just being able to go hoop outside, all these things have as far as sculpting the kids. You know what I mean? You going up there, like you said, you had to play against older guys. It wasn't no, oh yeah, I'm up here, I'm on. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta wait your turn. And hopefully you don't play well enough. Well, one of the older guys be like, all right, let me get a little dude with a chance, you know. And you get on the court. Hopefully you don't get off. But talk about that as far as um, I know with your pops and your mom how that sculpted you. But as far as you getting up here in the community, how did that? How did that shape you as far as your your confidence building? You know what I mean? Your competitive competitiveness. That came out because Harmon Park, people, if you're not from the city of Nashville, listen, outside or inside at Harmon Park was going to be packed, guaranteed, like, and you're not guaranteed to get no spot, so you might be shooting on the side the whole day. Talk about that. Talk about that, how, how that led to you having a competitive bitch. Yeah, man, it's a lot of old school dudes. That could really go. That played up the Harlem Park. They never really played past. Really, never even even played in high school uh, or or college. And uh, you know, you go up there, you play. You may get one shot a game, but the key is you better knock that shot down. And uh, and one and one nickname you one nickname you gave me when I was older. I was doing when I was younger too, Mister Intangibles. I couldn't. <laughs> I, when you ain't getting no shots, you better go get a steal. You better get a putback. You better get an offensive rebound, kick it out. You know, you just do whatever, do whatever you can to make your team win. And when I was, you know, when I was 13, 14 up there playing, uh, and it was 25 people waiting to get next, you had to do whatever you could to win because if you lost, you might as well go home. Yeah. Well, like you are on the side goal. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of fouling, a lot of tough love. I've seen, I've seen a lot of stuff. Uh, and, you, know, and, uh, you, know, and, uh, you know, sometimes we take some of the best players and go to other centers and hoop against them dudes. Like, that, that was, that's where that competitive grind came from. Uh, uh, no, no, no versus, versus kind of what we see now, now where, you know, some, some of the youth don't, don't, they don't play as much uh, in that the atmosphere. They play AU and they're playing six games a day. Win or lose, it don't even matter. matter. You know what I'm saying? So, so a little bit of that competitive, competitive edge that our, us old, older school guys have comes from them center league games when you can only play. If you lose, you might be done for the day. Facts. So let's tell, let me tell the people how this comes, how this relationship with me and Lil Penny comes about. Like he said, his pops got the job at Pearl Cone. Um, a little penny, like when I tell my story, I was a TSU baby, you know, being a ball boy running around, uh, trying to be involved with the team in any capacity I could be. I don't care if it's rebounding, whatever it may be, get in there, run a drill, or three on zero fast break, whatever it may be. And I remember, man, that uh little penny was around, but I I you know, I didn't know like his, his dad was new to it. I didn't know this was his pops, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, what's this dude? This little kid that's always up here. But then all of a sudden you look and you're like, man, look, dude, we got a little game to him too. You know what I mean? So you start to befriend him, you know what I mean? Take him under your wing as a little brother, this, that, and another. So I was at Pearl Cone being coached by his pops. You were there. Tell me um, in your perspective what you saw, um, how that Pearl Cone whole atmosphere, and it was changing when your pops got there. It was, it yeah. was known as like a lean on me school in the beginning, but you know what I mean? When yeah. your pops got down, along with Coach Fitzgerald and a lot of teachers, Miss Jones and so forth and so on, like they started to mold the school and went and went started going into a different direction, started winning on the field and all that. So tell me what you saw. Well, you know, first of all, I had been around a lot of high school basketball as a young fella all the way up to that point. Right. And my dad coached had coached a lot of good uh teams and a lot of really good players. Mm -hmm. So I I know what I knew what it looked like. I, I saw a lot of good teams out of Memphis going to win state championships, so I knew what a, a really good team looked like, and I knew what bad teams looked like too. And I saw my dad's teams uh, go from had that transition. And when y'all got there, it was like talent that I had never seen before. It was a it was a level of talent and uh, athleticism and IQ and size. Um, that I really no, I had never seen before. My dad coached teams like that, so I was I was uh, obviously a fan. But for me personally, as a sixth, seventh grader, and eighth grader, it was in ninety, was in ninety seven. That made though y'all's team to me, he was like an NBA team. I looked at y'all like y'all that 
that that, that, that important. important. Right. And, and I, I never, never I never forget, forget man. One of the one, one of the, the moments when I said, said oh, okay, these dudes are real life culture changers was when y'all went to all these classic yeah and um Bristol Pro Cone yeah Bristol Bristol Tennessee and Pro Cone's team was uh a virtually a unknown team. team. Uh, the team was. We, we had some, some good uh, main players like yourself. Like yourself and Hanson. Hanson. I don't, I don't even think John Hanson played in all those classes, classes, to be honest. honest. We did. But we, 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 we had some real name players. Right. And, and went up there, there won, won a couple games, and everybody was kind of there. Third third game, people started showing up with headbands on and wristbands on and pearl cone signs. And these people, people are from Bristol. Bristol. These, these people, people are not national pro fans. Right. These people, people are from Bristol. Bristol. And Johnson City, are the people from Johnson, from Johnson City, Tennessee, which is our way of driving up to watch pro play. Right. And, and what really, really put the nail in is when you won the dunk contest. Oh, man. That put y'all on a whole other level, man. That to me, like, just fast forwarding for me, my high school team, I wanted my high school team to be so much like pro cones, 96, 97, 98 team. Because y'all, not, not only were y'all cold, y'all, y'all a good team, team right. but y'all, y'all, y'all wore the, the, the Jordans, yeah. the Cincinnati Bearcat had some Jordans that came out and they were wearing Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Y'all, y'all started wearing them, y'all rocking the headbands, y'all, y'all dunking and going down and doing this, yeah. y'all had tattoos, y'all doing handshakes, you know what I'm saying? So I do all of that. So when I got the White Street, I said, no, it got to look like, I know it got to look like this. So I made my, we wore headbands. We wearing our own pins and pippins. We didn't wear the direct team shoes. You know what I'm mean? saying? We had to be. We had to have that pearl cone swag. So y'all team, y'all did impact with us. And uh, man, that was just. A, it was really a, a monumental moment, man, for me to see y'all have that kind of success and, and really it's impacted to where I, impacted me today, to this day. I appreciate that, man. That's 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 a big pat on the back, man. Because I know I give it up to the guys that I, I was able to see, like a David Sutter. Mike Blivens, you know what I mean? All these people that you you hear about, man, and, and I remember Coach Coach Collins getting Calvin Peters and all them guys that come scrimmage us, and I'm like, man, this kind of crazy, man. These older guys, they not. But they they chin-checking us, doing everything to us. But he was doing something to, to get us ready for the next level. You know what I mean? He knew the competition was there, but we got to get outside our, our comfort zone, and he did that by bringing in Calvin and guys like that, man. It was that was why, you know, but um, okay, so yep. getting ready to go into high school. You mm-hmm. all, what year, what year, what year were you getting ready to go into White's Creek? 1999. Was your pop, yeah, your pops was still coaching at Pearl. He was still coaching at Pearl. Still coaching and at Pearl. Now, I, I wanted to go to Pearl back. Yeah. Why wouldn't I want to go to Pearl? Right. Play for my dad. You, you, you now, know, you're already like a student yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody knew me. People thought I already went to Pearl, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I feel like a a a, 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 a pearl cone person, anyways, because I grew up on that campus. Right. You know what I, mean? I, I need an honorary degree from Pearl. Yes. I was probably the only, I probably was the only student that was not from Pearl that was in I Have a Future program. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. So, uh, but yeah, man. So I wanted to go to pearl cone, but you know, obviously. Mama wasn't having that, right. you know what I mean? Right. Mama was not having that. She just didn't, she just didn't want me to go through that whole politics of people saying, you just playing because your dad's the coach and, you know, you know, the hearsay or all that negative stuff that goes, comes with being the coach's son. And she wanted me to go basically write my own story. Right. And so, uh, you know, I was, I was zoned to White Creek and White Creek had a phenomenal coach, the legendary rest of peace coach Nana. Without a doubt. And uh, so I, we ended up going to White Creek. Hey, and so going over there, as Pearl Cone was trying to get that rich tradition, because Pearl was a school that was joined. We were trying to get that rich uh, tradition. Lights Creek already had that history with, with the Marlin Sims, mm-hmm. David Vaughn, they now back all the way back to the Calvin Peters and people like that. So you, I think you, you, that was a good choice. You know what I mean? I think your mom was able, she was privy to see how things would, took place with. Coach Fitzgerald and his son, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it's some different dynamics when you have that coach-son relationship in a school like that. So, great choice, man. Right. I would love to see you over at Pearl. I remember um, hearing about, like, man, they say little Penny, man, he the crew. You know what I mean? Man, he cold lives. I said, man, wait a minute. Where you at? They said, man, he at White's Creek. I said, oh, <laughs> no. Say it ain't so. You know what I mean? Hurt me to my heart. <laughs> but you went over there, man, and you wrote, you wrote your own 
in your own chapters and your own book over there. Yeah. So tell me about yeah. going into that, um, going over there to White's Creek immediately. Did you have to come back in and um, stamp yourself again, you know, knowing that you got the pearl cone ties? You going into White's Creek? How was that? Well, not 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 as much because I, I was I went to Union Park. And since I was zoned to White Creek, all my friends from Union Park were, were already there. And Coach Norman used to come to Union Park games all the time to kind of see who was who and who he who he might be getting. So um, I didn't really feel like I had to earn like my spot there. I think I think I kind of went into White Creek knowing that I was going to be you know starting point guard on the freshman team and you know uh, maybe dress out varsity some. Right. But uh, what really what really changed the game for me? I was about five eight and I grew to six one. Mm. Uh, from my freshman, freshman and sophomore year that summer. And by the time the season hit, my sophomore year, I was 6'2". By the time the season hit. So I, I, I had a massive growth from freshman to sophomore year. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that, that's, 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 that's a whole that's different body you got <laughs> coming into there. So, <laughs> but you're still coming in with the point guard skills and everything. And now at this point, had you still had the relationships with the guys that you had came up with, like Lil Hassan was on your team at the Northwest Wire? That carry over all the way to White's Creek when she yep. was there. Yep, yep. So what happened was the team, the Northwest YMCA Stars, the Northwest Stars, our team uh, kind of, you know, broke up because everybody got older. But I ended up joining Mike Williams' team called the Tennessee Thunder, okay. which is uh, one of the best teams ever come out of Nashville in, in that era, like in that era. Right. And uh, we had all we had all the top players in the district, you know, from White's Creek and Pearl and uh, Hunters Lane, and even we even got the kids from the country. And really, that same the same thing we see players have. We kind of had the same thing. Uh, we just took all the best players from the city in Clarksville and DCA, uh, you know, from Donaldson. You know, we had all the, had all the top guys, and so we had a relationship. We had a great relationship. Hassan, he went to Hunters Lane. Right, his uh, freshman Yep. Yeah. So basically, basically, I, I was D Wade, and I made I made Hassan leave. He was LeBron. I said, I come, come join me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get busy over here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's what happened. So yeah, this, that's, AU that's how team, happened. this AU team that you joined, who were some of the guys that you kind of were able to get around? Because at this point, you were a factor in the, on the hoop scene. Like, it was, yeah. you were who you were, you know what I mean? And you could see you blossoming into something special. And there was other talent around. Who were some of the guys that you were able to hoop with on this team? Um, obviously Hassan, uh, Rashid, who was 5'8", jumped like 42 inch vertical. <laughs> we had Spencer Richardson from Maplewood. He was their leading scorer. Yep. We had uh, Bubba Taylor, who was a starting point guard at Maplewood. We had Ron Smith, who, who was a starting uh, big man at Maplewood. Uh, we had Miles Campbell from Stratford, who was, you know, DeMar was the best player, but Miles was the second best player. Right. Um, yeah, but Miles... The real deal. We had Antoine, uh, we had uh, Ken Swan from Antioch, uh, who was extremely athletic, and we had our big man was Boomer Herndon from DCA. Big Boomer, your team. Uh, what up, Boom? Yeah. See, and then we had uh, Danny Wick from Hendersonville. We had a really, really good program. I might miss a few guys. Nick Hodge from Boone right. Falk. Right. And uh, I mean, we, we just we were well bound. And we ended up going to the Nationals in uh, Detroit. And, Sure. I think we finished top 25 in the country that year. So, you know, we had some really good teams. That's heavy. And you guys at White Creek had a hell of a run also. Let's 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 dive in. Yep. Dive into that run a little bit. Shout out to Horn, man. Mingo Johnson on here. Salute, Horn, man. Appreciate you tuning in to the Boom Boom Room. Um, you got some guys right here that you, you done tutored, man, from close by and far away, Horn. So, salute to you, man. Um, so, Penny, tell me about diving in. Let's go, let's go to your junior year. Let's go to your well, hold on. I gotta say this though. See, I, I can't see what you can see, but listen, I gotta say this about Mingo. I did. I, I saw a little bit of me. I heard a little bit about Mingo all the way in Memphis. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I came to Nashville, you know, I hadn't. I didn't see Mingo in high school. Right. But when I went to open gym out of Vanderbilt, out of Vanderbilt, we talk about that Vanderbilt open runs here in a minute too. But right. I. Ain't, if you were a point guard in that era and you watched Mingo Johnson play, there ain't no way you couldn't want to be like Mingo Johnson. Exactly. Oh my God. I mean, his ability, the ability, his ability all around was special, but the way he dribbled, the way he moved, his IQ, his, the, his, the passing ability, I still really haven't played with or against nobody that can pass the ball like Mingo Johnson. The man, the man, before you go any further, listen, man, I remember playing 
pick up with Horn. And man, the man took, he told me when we when he picked me up, man, keep your hands ready. Keep your hands ready. <laughs> the man passed the ball to me with his left and he hit me dead square in the nose. And I was like, God, Lee, come on, come on, come on, you gotta keep your hands up. I told you keep your hands up. I'm like, come on, man. Like, mm -hmm. I ain't expecting you to do that in no pickup game, man. Not no no look like that. And he's seeing the whole thing. That was a real floor general, man. Like, without a doubt. That was yeah. a big time. Shout out to him, man. And, and the last thing I want to say, too, is, is that sometimes when guys like that have been successful, they don't want to reach back and, and pick a guy up. But every time you see Mingo, he's extremely positive. He got some positivity to tell you. There hasn't been one time that Mingo watched me play, watched me coach, see me in the streets, call my phone, and been some negative. Always positive, dude. And man, big shouts out to Mingo Johnson, man, for real. Another one of Nashville's own facts. You are you hitting it on the head. So yep. now I've been to your junior year. Yeah. Junior year is the year we should have won the state championship. You know, I know a lot of people say shoulda, coulda, woulda, but what we should have won the state championship, man. What year was this? Huh? What year was this? This was 2001. Okay. We were uh, number three or four in ranking the state or something like that. We were 28 and 28 and four or something like that, and we played against Gallatin in the sub state. Mm -hmm. And um, Gallatin ended up beating us. At home in the sub state, 39 and 37 in overtime. Now, mind you, we, we hadn't scored 39. We scored 39 by halftime. Right. But we, we, just, we just had the worst possible game you could ever think of. And uh, what makes the matter even worse, Gallatin got beat by Hunter's Lane earlier in the year by like 20. And we beat, we beat Hunter's Lane three times that year by average, by average 20. You know what I'm saying? So Gallatin goes on. Gallatin goes on. To play, to play against Barley in, in the state championship, championship game. Gallatin goes all the way to the state championship game. And Barley won the state championship. Well, guess, well, guess what? what? Early in the year, we, we, went, to, we went to Memphis, Memphis to play Barley. Barley. And we, we beat Barley, Barley in Memphis. It's tough. At, at Barley. So, so we, you know, if you know the landscape of basketball, it's difficult to go on the road to Memphis and beat anybody. Okay. It would, especially a team from Nashville. It's very difficult. So, right. Yeah. Right. And I, want, and I want to say, Dude, I'm undefeated against Memphis high school basketball team as a player. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? I, I, I know I'm from Memphis. I know I love Memphis. I respect Memphis. I'm from there. You know, I got I got some roots there, but I ain't never lost to no state championship, Barlett. Yeah. To, to other teams. You played the Civic Tan or any don't matter. We ain't never lost to no Memphis team. But that year, we were supposed to win a state championship, man. And that stuff still haunt me to this day. I ain't going to lie to you. Right. Like, we should have won the state that my junior year. You can and you so can hear I do the got competitiveness something. and all of it oozing out of you right there. That's what I love. <laughs> Cause that's how yeah. I feel. <laughs> I'm hot about it. I'm, I'm still hot about it. You know, I just like in '90, your junior year too, y'all. You know, Dumb. my county game, man. It took me about. It took me ten years to watch that game, dog. Hey man, I don't even want to watch it because I know it was our fault. As mm. play, listen, I'm on here right now. The city is wonder, you know what I mean? And this interview ain't about me, but he done threw it out there. Listen, y'all, it was the player's fault. I'm telling you. You don't have to wait, you know what I mean, until the book come out or whatever, but just know, man, it was us. We, we, were, we were immature and so, so, so silly to do the stuff that we were doing. And we should, if I could go back and do it again, I wasn't the captain of that team. I was I was always a young pup. Um, but I wish we would have never stayed in Murfreesboro. We never stay in Murfreesboro. We come home and get in our bed. It might be a little different, man, because oh, that was silly. But anyway. You know, you know what I remember about that game, though? What? John Henderson in the locker room after the game. I, I tell people all the time, Penny. Oh. <laughs> you, you think he don't love basketball? You should have been in that locker room right there. Exactly. Exactly. I tell people all the time. I remember reporters standing outside that locker room telling me uh, what they talking about inside. I'm like, man, I ain't going in there. Don't, don't you hear that? Like, Big Joe and that man, that man threw a bike rack before he went in there. <laughs> hitting lockers like, come on in there. I'm not, I'm not going in there, man. I, no, no. <laughs> I'm not going in there. I'm standing out here with the reporters, man. Whenever they come in, that's what I'm going in, man, because 
Dude right there, man, it meant so much. And you understand from a guy that won two state championships in football, what it was going to take. You know what I mean? He knew us on the basketball team, everybody that played football. So besides the coach, we didn't really know. <laughs> you know what I mean? We were just out there, you know? And, man, that was oh, – you talking about hot, boy. You just, you just pulled that scale back on that one. Hey, ooh, that was rough. That was too rough. Right, you know, that man. Was, that was too rough. I already know. And, and I want to say this, too. But a lot of it's a lot of people out here saying stuff on social media like, like Facebook, Facebook about what they did in high school. Mm-hmm. In high school, I have the box sheets. I have the you know the green stat sheets. Yeah, I have all of those. So I've, I've been very very pushed. If I wasn't if I wasn't a head coach of Tennessee State, I would get on social media and start printing box scores up because we got a lot of people saying stuff. Okay, it's not true. All yeah. right, we. we the White Creek and I was White Creek, especially my junior year, we beat everybody by 20 at one point. Every team got beat by at least 20. And I got the facts to prove it. <laughs> talk that talk, Penny. That's what I'm talking about. Talk that talk, Penny. For Simmer. For Simmer. Simmer, Simmer. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody be cool. Y'all be cool out there. You know what I mean? Hey. Right. So, junior year, y'all, y'all felt like y'all was supposed to win. That hurt yeah, you. We should have won it. Stra- no, Stratford that year, honestly, though, Stratford was special that year. We lost four games. We lost to Stratford three times that year. Really? Crazy. Stratford was good, but Jacquees Curry, yeah. he was one of the best players I ever played against, boy. He's a bad boy. But um, they be, they had our, they just had our number. But we lost to Stratford three times, and we lost to White County. How about that? That that really should have ate you up. Oh, listen, let me tell you something. I just looked at, this, I just looked at we lost by two. And, and, and I, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so mad I didn't get revenge for my pops and Pearl Man, what? We, we played, played at White, White County. County. But, but, yeah, it is what it is, man. man. Like, that guy, man, that, that, man it, it haunted me to this day, man. I, I had talked to the coach from Gallatin, the high school coach from Gallatin, about three months ago about one of his players. And he brought the game up. And I was just like, hey, man, hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, man, you got a lot of vets, man. Dante Jones, Ramon Foster, all of them went in, man, saying it got to mean something different to you. You know what I mean? Listen to Coach Penny. I don't even, I don't even know him, man. He, and he made me want to play for him. So, hey, man, that's it, dog. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that oozes across, and you see it. I mean, you see it. It means something yeah. different to you. You know what I mean? So, yeah. getting ready to go into your senior year. AU. Where are you in AU, and where are you? Do you all have an opportunity to get back to the state? Are you feeling that way? Going into your senior um, year? I did. I, I was confident about our team going into my senior year, but we had we lost, lost a lot. Uh, but but we did have me and Hassan. We had our starting backcourt back, and um, and I feel good about that. So um, we played. We had a good year. I think we ended up being something like. 23 and five and something like that, and going back to the uh, won the district championship, uh, won the conference tournament, won the conference district championship, and then we played. Uh, we had just beat Maplewood by like 15. You know how it is in the Metro when you play somebody four, four times in a matter of two weeks, and we had just beat them in the semifinals on Friday, and then you played in the region semifinals again, and they beat us that game, man, to go to the uh, championship game. So. Uh, Spencer and them got me, man. They ended my high school career. But we had a good we had a good senior year all in all, especially considering, you know, we lost so much and got back to the region semifinals one game away from going back to the subject. Okay. So let's look at your high school career. Um, I know what it was at, at Weiss Creek. Going into AAU, how important and how big of a factor was AAU in, um, in your basketball development in your recruiting process that came along, um, just t- just talk okay. talk about that. Talk, give me give me a little bit about that, a little insight on it. Well, you we know, know, playing high school ball at, at, at that time for us, like we weren't we didn't get to go to Arby's Classic or any t- tournaments out of town and things like that. We were always kind of local. So uh, playing AAU gave us opportunity to get out of the state and play against people from all over the country. But the, the thing is, it's different. It's different now. Back then, now they play. They'll play. Well, not now because of COVID nineteen. But when they were playing in the summer, they would have six or seven opportunities to play in front of us college coaches. You know, and it didn't really matter. Like, you know, they play on a one weekend. We'll be there. The next weekend, we'll be there. It don't matter if they won or lost. Uh, we'll see them again in July for three straight weekends. We're gonna see them. It didn't matter. We're gonna see them all year, all summer. 
But back, back when, when I was playing, playing and you was playing, 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 the only way you got seen by a college coach is you had to get to the national tournament. There you go. So you you play the sub state, you better finish top two. You play in the you better finish top four. And then you got some of most of us had to go out and raise money to just to even make it to the national. You could get down there. Be on the sideline, be on cost of how they get money, uh, putting the carts out, doing whatever we could to scrape up that change, to get to Orlando, to play for the coaches. That's how it is. See, and see, you got one. one, one, one see, I, played in, I, played I played in college, played for the college coaches, coaches for one, one tournament, dog. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey, man, that's why uh, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. As a, uh, a older generation, and we look at the AU landscape, and you look across Nashville, and you see 15 to 20 teams with AU teams. Like it wasn't like that. Like you might have a little team. And you go play in that sub state, and right. you get put out of that. And like, if you're good enough, you probably get plucked from that team. Another one get plucked, you get put on the team, <laughs> and then you can go on to play in the state. You win the state, okay? We beat them. We'll get one or two from them. Then you go in the nationals. Then you're on that great that great stage. So it's kind of like when you were younger. You know what I mean? You got them. You got them. Um, them outside chances at the center to get picked up on the team. If you don't win. Oh well, <laughs> you know. Not consistent. Yeah, you're not, not even seen, got to worry about no coaches see. And I, I, I'll tell you this about me, about my recruiting, and my mama. I done told my mama this story a lot. I kind of blame her for me not. I did not play well in Orlando for the national tournament. Right. Uh, because the weekend I played on two age teams. I played on the 19 under Tennessee under team, and I played on the 17 and under. So the 19 and under team went to a national tournament. Was in Boo, I mean, was in uh, Virginia with Boo Williams mm -hmm. up there, up, up in Virginia. So I'm playing in the 19 and under tournament, and I'm playing so I play so well. Uh, we, I we played against JJ Reddy. We played against Team Select out of Michigan. That's our point guard going to Wichita. I averaged like 17 in that tournament. I mean, I played great. It was no college. It wasn't any college coach there because it was 19 and under. All these guys are about to go. The college, college next year. year. Right. So, so all the, a lot of those guys have already signed. 17 on the tournament is, is where I should have just 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 had rest and went down there. I played from Monday to Wednesday in the uh, Boo Williams, and then I went Friday to Sunday. I flew from Virginia to Orlando to join my 17 on team. And when I got down there, man, I was just tired. I just I felt like I didn't. I felt like I wasn't well rested. Right. Uh, even though I came out of the tournament, I came out of the tournament with like you know a bunch of mid majors like Austin P, Belmont, Air Force, some schools like that, Sanford. But I just always wondered what it would have been like had those coaches seen me you know three or four days before or playing against the 19 other guys. You know what I'm saying? I probably would have, probably got over. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. You got as if you got them legs on you, it, it, it's different for you. Dante Jones just chimed right. in. Salute. Salute, Tate. They're not even playing AAU now. They're playing tournaments on the weekend. You are exactly right. So if you're being fooled by the yeah. tournaments yeah. Right, that you're playing in, it ain't even no coach. Hey. Able to, that ain't even through the live period sometimes. And, and, and listen, I, uh, I know I don't want to pause by every legend that comes on, but I got to say this. You got to pay your respects. Dante Jones. You're totally right. Yeah. Dante Jones. Time. First team. His first team was not these team, this team take team everybody talking about the NY, NYBA, mm -hmm. and he's doing a fantastic job. And everybody's patting Tay on the back saying this is his first. His first team was in 1997, and, and Corey Allen was our coach. Corey Allen put together a team of me, Hassan, George King, his his little brother Cal Allen, and we were called the Nashville Ballers. And on our court, on our short set, Dante Jones. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I just moved here, so I didn't know who that was. Right. I'm like, who was Dante Jones? They're like, he played Mississippi State, and he just got drafted. He's going, draft, he's going to, the, uh, to the Celtics. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And Dante came to the gym one time and pulled up, and he was he was playing that wiki coming out of his cop. He's wiki. Who? <laughs> <laughs> who is this guy? I mean, like, he he impacted us. He doesn't know that, like, him, him coming around and being around and just giving us those little nuggets here and there, uh, it, it sparked an interest in our minds that's un, that made us think that we got a guy right here from the city who played Metro Ball, who's in the league? Right. Like, he wanted us. Right. And he ain't no square, neither. Mm -hmm. 
Now, he pulling up, like I said. No, that's the same that's stuff tank. we want to listen to. So. He pulling up his tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, walking inspiration, man. You know, and uh, and Corey Allen is the same way, man. Both of those guys, to me, are, are walking walking trophies. And I just want to give you the ultimate respect to both of them, man. Without without doubt, man. You got always shout out Tate, man. Bigger than me. Um, he, he's uh, bigger than like persona that lived up to that persona. That's very seldom does that happen. So, uh, you got you got you got that AAU experience. With now, let's touch on. I know I, I had to do a little digging. You know what I mean? But I always try to get a little gym in there. You were on a team with Starlito. So yep, yep. I, I, I did I did a little so, digging on this. Tell yep. me who I was on this team, because I talked to CJ Watson last night. He told me to give you a shout out. You know what I mean? Keep inspiring us, keep doing what you're doing for the city. You know what I mean? So you you your relationships that you built growing up lead to where you are today. It's still a connection there throughout. You know what I mean throughout the throughout the states with that. So talk talk about talk about some of the guys that was on that team. You know uh, when, when when you were with the CJ Watsons, the Star Little. Talk about that. I I got a quick little beginning story first. Okay. When, when you, you went, went to Tennessee, Tennessee mm-hmm. when, when you, you decided to go to Tennessee, Tennessee, I was a senior in high school, and, and I'm, I'm like, like dog. dog. I, I want to go, go down, down there and play, and play with Slay. Like, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? So I was, I was, I was, I was saying how like the Buzz Peterson mm-hmm. and, you know, you remember Chris Ferguson? Mm-hmm. And, and I would send them my schedule, like, like come, come see me play. And, and Buzz, Buzz Peterson wrote me back a letter, letter like, uh, 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 young college, man. I've heard a lot of good things about you. We're going we're gonna to come watch the Christmas tournament, blah, 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 blah. They never came to watch me play, but he did, he did, he did reach back out. Right. And But in my mind, my goal was, I gotta go. I wanna go to Tennessee, Tennessee and play with Slate. Slate. Ooh, I'll right. play, play, play with Slate. Slate. Ooh, that's a dream come true. true. That's, that's what I that's what I really wanted to do. Right. Well, well I, remember, I remember I remember being in the library. Back then, internet, internet wasn't on no phone. Y'all remember that. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't. The only way you get on the internet is you had to go to the library. I'm in the library, and I think back then it was called maybe Yahoo.com or Coach.com. I can't remember what it was, but it said it said Tennessee balls get their point guard. Signed C.J. Watson from Las Vegas. <laughs> Boy, I was so mad. <laughs> when C.J. Watson signed with Tennessee, yeah. I'm thinking that's my scholarship. They didn't sign this man. Vegas. That's my spot. You got somebody right here. You got somebody right here in Cashville that do the same thing. Right. So all right. So that that I had to tell you that part because after my senior year, I played on a team, Tennessee Thunder team. Was uh, 19 and under. So now I'm, you know, I had already committed to Belmont. I'm already going to Belmont. So we got me, Josh Goodwin, who's going to Belmont with me, mm-hmm. and then uh, jo- uh, Boomer Herndon, who was already enrolled in Tennessee. Right. This national tournament, the national tournament was in Knoxville. Right. So we're playing. Uh, so 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 uh, the coach at the time, I guess it's Buzz Peterson, said, since y'all let Boomer play, I'm gonna let C.J. Watson. Uh, John, John Winchester mm-hmm. and Stanley mm-hmm. Sumner mm-hmm. play with y'all. So, so we had me and Josh, four of UT ball, ball players, uh, uh, Billy May from Father Ryan, uh, Adam, Adam Brock from Page, and maybe a couple other guys. guys. And then Starlito was, was playing with Alex Renfro and, and them guys on the 17 on the team. team. They, they went ahead and brought the team, team up to play in Knoxville. Even though they were young, they just let them play in the tournament, right? Right. So quick, quick, before I talk about Starlito, our very first practice. I was, I was going, going so hard on C.J. Watson. Yeah. Well, I hit him up full court. I was trying, trying to dunk every time. Every time I was playing so aggressive. Yeah. C.J. wasn't. He was trying to go into the motions. Right. And John, John, John Winchester was like, yo, C.J., yo, man, yo, man, man can you go on this? What's up, man? What's up? He was, you know, C.J. nonchalant. He don't know what to talk. C.J. like, I don't, yeah, I don't care. care. And C.J. didn't know. I had beat. You know what I mean? I had beat. I was going to see C.J. head first practice. Right. You know what I'm saying? He'll tell you. Straight so anyways, uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, Starlito. Okay. okay, so this is this is a, a long story, but it's, it's a good one. Hey okay? man, listen, listen, so, viewers, that, y'all in the boom boom room. This is unfiltered, unrated. This is how you get it. You know what I mean? The conversation goes where it goes. We don't have to be anywhere, but you here with us right here in the boom boom room. <laughs> Enjoy this, me and Brian Collins. You know what I mean? We rapping and chopping it up. We got plenty of time to the last dance. Come on. Y'all stay right here with us. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Ben. 
All right, so so at that time he was Jermaine, Jermaine All Star. Yeah. He was uh, on the seventeen hundred team, and we were staying. We actually didn't even stay in a hotel. Boomer's daddy put us in a log cabin somewhere off the off the beach in Knoxville somewhere. So we had some log cabins. So we didn't have a lot to do but play cards, and you know we didn't even have the TVs in our room. Right. We playing cards, really, that's all we did. We play cards, and play games, and stuff. And one thing we did a lot was a freestyle rap. And I couldn't rap, but I'd be in it. I'd be in the beat. beat. Now, yeah, you know John Winchester, he's from New Jersey. Yeah. So New York dudes, they come in there with a big song. They tell you they know everything about music. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell, you can't tell New, New York and New Jersey cats nothing about rap. No. All right, so uh, I'm telling them, I'm like, go get my young boy, uh, Jermaine, for the company. Let him come in here and rap for y'all. Jermaine come in there, and everybody else rapping. John said, garbage, garbage, garbage. And then Jermaine started rapping. Jermaine started rapping. He's like, oh, he cold. This dude real cold. Like, so like that, like you can see like Jermaine, like, yeah, I told y'all I'm cold. You know what I'm saying? That confidence is growing in him. So, anyways, two weeks after, two weeks after we played the national tournament, which when we get done with this story, I gotta tell you about the national championship game. Okay. Yeah. We lost in the national championship. Okay. So um we go on two weeks, we get back, we in Nashville. And me and Jermaine, we got, you know, we got a little crew, we all run together all the time. And and Jermaine is not is having a hard time kind of really finding somewhere to get a get in the studio. You know what I'm saying? He, he, you know, it's hard getting studio time. So if anybody from Nashville, you know, you remember the RB singer Crew. Crooner, yes. Crooner and the producer Stats. You know, those are two, you no know, rap and RB legends. In the city, right. so uh, I had a mutual friend. I had a mutual friend that did jazz. Mm-hmm. So I'm t- I, I reached out to my friend. Like, hey man, see if jazz want to hear my guy, uh, uh, all star rap. Right. He's like, you know, so I'm gonna bring him up. You know, and uh, so he brings him up. He brings him up to the studio, and uh, he starts rapping, doing some freestyle and stuff like that. And Cool Daddy Fresh is in the studio today. Local legend. He's kind of on the couch, chilling like. Local legend. Yeah, this kind of, this kind of, huh? Mm-hmm. This is a local legend in the Boomer Room. Talking about Cool Daddy Fresh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool Daddy. Cool Daddy Fresh kind of in the cut, just chilling. And Jermaine is rapping. And then I, I want, I'm not sure exactly who the idea was, but I want to say Jazz is like, hey man, won't y'all rap? Won't y'all battle? So they going, they they going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I want to say, I don't, I always get the line messed up, but. Uh, Jermaine, Jermaine said, I'm 17, and you twice my age. By the time I get there, I'll be twice as paid. And the whole, everybody in the studio ran out of the studio. And that, that's the day, that is the day that All Star, the legend, was made. It was cranked up right if you then don't believe, If you don't believe this story, go on All Star's album and listen to Life's Story. He says, Lil Penny heard my raps. He said I was the best. He called his homie AP and he made me battle fresh. That is the true facts. And see, then my boy just dropped. He ain't doing nothing but drop a couple of receipts, you know what I mean, along the way to let you know. Go check out the receipts, see what he's talking about, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight up yeah, and down. Yeah. That's what's well, up. Like, to it's see like, him, to see his career just grow to something special like it is now, man, it's just, it's unbelievable to see, man, where that man is now to, to where we were. You know, rapping in a log cabin yeah. and on AD trips. Right. And uh, now he's you know, he's one of the best to ever come out of the city. That, and that's crazy, man, because I know, like, it's so many hidden gems here in our city, man, like, that people don't know on the, on the, and, and, it's, and I, it's, we don't heard about it so much that it's bubbling up, bubbling up, bubbling up. Like, everywhere I go, man, I'm, a, I'm, I'm willing to say, man, Star is just as known as me. Uh, in, in Knoxville, like, I, I don't heard people ask me, and then, you know, I'll stop, you know, I'll stop. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, what about me, though, you know? <laughs> you feel me? Like, but he done, he done worked his way up, you know what I mean? And grinded his way up, man. So salute to Lido, man. We're going to have to get Lido in the boom boom room one day, too, man. But He'll yeah, love it. I ain't no doubt. So how did you come across with your recruiting? Let, let, let's shift back for a second. How, how, how did your recruiting go with Bill? Hold Hold up. I got to tell you the, the championship game story. Okay, get to it. So, so we played against, we played against uh, 
the North Carolina, Carolina Gators, Gators in the national championship game. Okay. And their, their starting five was Raymond Felton at the one, mm. Shawan Robinson, Robinson with, the with the Clemson at the two, Rashawn McCants at the three, David Noel at the four. I mean, they had they had they did, they essentially did the same thing that Tennessee did. Tennessee sent all their freshmen. University of North Carolina, Clemson, and Wake Forest. They, they sent their freshmen. Right. So ACC versus versus Tennessee and Belmont in the national championship game. game. And it was a sold out game in uh in in, in Knoxville. I can't think of what high school, the North City High School. That's, That's where the game was. Okay. And, and so, so we play we play in the game and CJ CJ was uh, bringing the ball to court. And Ray Phelps was picking, picking his man on full court, court turning. That's what a court. And, 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 and CJ getting mad. CJ, CJ like, man, I can't, I can't score, man. Like, he said, uh, he said, Penny, you play the point, and I'm gonna play the two, so I can get going. I'm yeah. like, bet. So, so, so I go, we come out the timeout. I go, I go get the ball because I got like, you know, some other little guard on me, Shawan Robinson. I'm like, I'm low past him. We're gonna get this thing rolling. Yeah. I go out, take the ball, throw the ball, and I turn around. Ray Phelps sitting there waiting on me. <laughs> he's he taking whoever it is. Whoever bring the ball up, I got. <laughs> That's real. Yeah. That's real. That was a good story. They ended up beating us in that game. It was, I think they beat us by like six, but it was a really, really good game. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. on the national stage, able to bounce back from when you went down to Orlando, you know what I mean, to get your name back bubbling. So yeah, who, yeah. Your cho- who were your choices when you were getting ready to go to school? Did you automatically know Belmont? Did you want to stay in the city? Was that a part of it? What was what was your your mind frame in your recruiting? Really, to be uh, the real story is I wanted to go to Tennessee State. Mm-hmm. I, I wanted to go to TSU bad, man. And I ended up committing to Tennessee State. Mm-hmm. And um, long story short, the coach at the time was Nola Richardson, and I guess he felt like since I was from Nashville, he took my commitment, and maybe like two or three weeks after I committed, uh, it was like it was like in late, it was like April. There was a plan open gym, and I, he asked me to come up there, and he just basically told me. I guess since I was in Nashville, he thought I could walk on. He's like, would you rather walk on? I mean, I, I mean, not, not would you, but I need you to walk on mm-hmm. so that I can get this other scholarship. And I was like, no, nah, Coach, I need a scholarship. You know what I'm saying? So um, I basically decommitted and uh, went to uh, Belmont, ended up coming through the picture. And, I mean, everything happened for a reason. I ended up taking uh, taking the scholarship at Belmont. But, uh, you know, originally I committed to Tennessee State. That's funny, man. So looking at it, man, this is – Imagine how, and I and and we'll get into this later. But imagine how the 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 plot could have twisted, man. With somebody else like me and John were here talking about, you know, um, going to going to Tennessee State University. Imagine the twist it could have put on it. You know what I mean? Like TSU for the people listening in Boom Boom Room, the history is so deep and rich in all sports. I mean, track. Um, football, basketball, women's ba- like it's it's so deep, man. But um, just that 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 one that one little turn, man. That one little thought of not bringing a person in, you know, or not throwing your throwing your rod out there, and casting your rod to try to get that big fish. It can always turn, man. Because I know for sure, if it would have came down to like that, like, and I would have been to Tennessee State University, and they asked me. Hey man, you know Lil Penny, this is my I'm going to my senior. Yeah, like hey, you know, this ain't even no question. Get him up here. Like, you know what I mean? The chain <laughs> reaction that it could have started. And then on oh, so forth on for you. Like the we'll get it, we'll get into where you took Belmont to, you know what I mean, as a team, but mostly you. You know, we 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 focused on you. So when you took them to the heights you took them to, it could have been the same thing for TSU. You could have been plugging and plugging and plugging. And then the next person comes along. But you go to Belmont, you know what I mean? And now, um, what what's that like as soon as you get on Belmont's campus? What what's your mentality? Are you are you what what's your thought process? Um, I wanted to make an immediate impact. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's one of the, why I took the, the I took the scholarship so fast because they only had one of the point guard on their roster, roster so, so I knew I could come in and play right away. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't know I would start. And I didn't start at the beginning of the season, but by December came, I was starting point guard as a freshman, and I started all the way through my senior year. But I, I think the, the biggest thing that I brought right away was I brought confidence to them guys. I felt like I never forget we was on the way to play Notre Dame. My first college game was Notre Dame. And I remember on the way to the game. Yep, in South Bend. 
Sold out crowd too. Yeah. I never forget our one of our sophomores or juniors was like, oh, we're about to get killed, man. Yeah. And I remember being like, I remember being like, what? Yeah. Y'all gonna beat these dudes, man? What are you talk about? Yeah, you don't you know, come like, from that. <laughs> you don't know nah. that mindset. Yeah. Nah. I couldn't believe you were saying that. So um, you know, they, you know, a lot of them guys, you know, they had never been around nobody like me. When they looked at it, looked at it as oh, he just copy, penny just copy. But now I was like, you gotta expect to win, and we gotta expect to win every day. I don't care if we're playing against the Bulls. We need to expect to win. And I, I do believe the class that I came in with changed that. Uh, you know, by by the time we got to the end, we ended up doing something they had never done before. Mm-hmm. So take me through that journey. Did your um, what, what what were some of the obstacles through your college journey? Before we get to that senior year and you guys going to the big dance, give me a, a couple obstacles. Did, did you and Coach Bird, salute to Coach Bird, um, just step down, what, a year ago this past year? Um, but yep, yep. A great season. You were, you were fortunate to play for him. Um, tell me about the your journey through that, through that college experience, you know what I mean, did, as far as the obstacles you had to go through. Um, I think one, the, one of the things that made it, Easy. No, I went, you know, no, I went, I don't know, no, I guess it's the word I should use, but I, uh, being a coach's son, I seen, seen my pops snap on so many people before and go at people's head and bench them and try to get their attention and say things to them to motivate them. So I already, like, there was nothing he could trick me with. I always felt like I took everything in stride. And uh, being able to stay and play at home was a blessing for me because. A lot of my friends and people that I surrounded myself with understood what I was trying to do. So I didn't, didn't really have any distractions at all staying at home and playing at Bell Um I think the biggest obstacle was that my, I felt like my, my uh, career at Belmont wouldn't be accomplished unless I helped them get to the NCAA tournament. You know, that was the, that was, that was the ultimate goal. You know, I wanted to go to the NCAA tournament and make people around the world know who Belmont was. That was 100% the goal. And the obstacle was every year, uh, we, we, weren't, we weren't getting it done. done. My, my freshman year, obviously, we didn't get it done. Sophomore, I mean, we were having some good years, though. You know, right. every year actually was every year was a history making year in some form or fashion. Right. Uh, so we were getting some things done, but we weren't getting that ultimate goal. So the obstacle of getting everybody on the same page, which is what you know, Coach Bird's job was, but as the leader of the team and the point guard for four straight years, you know, I felt like that was my duty too. My duty was to help get everybody. On, on that, that team, team, on that campus, campus believing that, that we could do something special. And, and ultimately, ultimately, we got, got the job, job done, man. man. Yeah, that's I mean, right. You know, that was, that's the really the swan story in the end. And, and, and I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm, a, I'm Tennessee through and through bleeding. You know what I mean? But one thing I'm, I'm more so than anything is a Nashville guy. You know what I mean? Nashville kid. You know what I mean? So it's still at heart. And I want anybody in Nashville, and as much as I hate to say it, y'all don't hold this to me. Band, I even want Vandy to do good at times, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying, like, you know, it's, it's you know, when, when y'all made it to the tournament, man, I felt proud. Like, and then with you anchoring the, the team, like, hell yeah. Like, yes. You know, what I mean? you know, I put my orange jersey down for a second. Man, I'm bailing my Bruins, man. I'm rocking with the Bruins, you know what I mean? That was big time, man. Tell me about being able to finally get to that stage and what it felt like. Going through the tournament, knowing y'all the Cinderella, you know what I mean? And, and the upset can happen. It is what it is. But y'all going out there, y'all playing balls to the wall, and whatever happens, happens. Tell me about the, right. the mindset and what that experience was like. Well, I think what you just said about people becoming Belmont fans is what it was all about, like I said from the beginning. Like, I, I wanted people to be like, know who Belmont was and be excited about Belmont. Right. And so that, that was the first part of it. The second part of it was – that selection Sunday, man, it ain't nothing like it. Hearing your name get called. Yeah. That's, that's an unbelievable story. We knew our name was going to get called, but it's just you don't know who you're going to play and that, that expectation and then just kind of waiting and see uh, what city you're going to. So that that was great. And then I remember getting to UCLA, getting there to the uh, getting to the hotel, and Coach had a, we had a team meeting in the, in the lobby in the meeting room, and he brings in this big old box. You know, and I'm like, what's this box for? He goes in the box and he's getting everybody a brand new pair of Harachis. I'm like, oh, this is how they do you in a tournament? But you getting, you know, you getting brand new shoes and then you play it. You, you have that practice in front of the fans and everybody's there 
phone as if every shot warm up is getting cheered for. And, you know, it might be the reporter from the game or sitting there courtside interviewing, talking to you and chopping it up. And, and we play UCLA, who ended up going to the national championship game that year and losing to Florida. And they, they, had, they had like four NBA players in their starting five. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that game, you know, obviously we, we, got, we got beat. Uh, but we went into the game, they just tried to upset them. You know, we wanted to beat them. But uh, ultimately, you know, when you there for the first time, it's hard to do it the first time. Yeah. But they, they, that, that experience is second to none. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was at the game. Bill Walton was at the game. Uh, we were up 11 to 6 at one point. Right. And I know for sure, if they didn't know who we were before then, if they didn't need time out, they knew who we were. Hey, <laughs> man. That's what it's about, man. That that impact, man. Like Dante just said, man. We all we all enjoyed the big dance, and that's one thing I can say, man. Like um, college kids, man. High school kids getting ready to go to college, man. Put that on your radar. You know what I mean? Like there is no other experience like it in the world. Like the the excitement you see Coach Penny talking with right now. Like that's what you actually feel, regardless if you know. You're going to be in the tournament or what? But you're sitting there watching the screen with the people you don't you don't work with in the preseason or grinded with, you know what I mean, sweat with, cried with, whatever it may be. And then him, his senior year, being able to put it in perspective and they come in full circle from they not even knowing our names to all of a sudden, you know what I mean, everybody that cheering for practice? Like, mm -hmm. come on, man. That, it, mm -hmm. it don't get no bigger. And I think everybody has a story, win or lose, whatever it may be. Has a story, man, from that big dance. And that's something you'll never, ever, ever forget. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's huge, man. That's huge. So y'all lost to UCLA, but you got to experience it. You know what I mean? You got to experience yep. the tournament. Um, and that now led on to bigger things. You know what I mean? For the school, Belmont, like people really believe now. I remember being overseas, making out my bracket, being like, and people being like, man, who is Belmont? Oh, that's a team to be ready to upset people. I'd be like, damn, they know who Bill Money is. You know what I mean? And that's a tribute to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, wear that, you should wear that with pride, man. Like that, that, that's that's big time, man. And I, I know I know you do. And not only for Bill Money, but for the city, man. Like you, you put it on your back, man. And that that was that was too real. So um, coming into that, after that, let's talk about uh, getting ready to go pro. What were your what were your what was your mind state? Did you have uh, what, what were your what was your guidance? You know what I mean. Who were your people you leaned on for those those decisions? And how was that? How was that part? Well, I um, you know, obviously, you know, I was talking to a lot of people, a lot of agents, mm -hmm. and I never get talking to Corey Allen the most throughout that process, and just basically asking him, you know, what what do I need to look forward to? So I ended up signing with an agent from uh, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and he got me a deal in Austria right away, like. You know, you know how they got those teams to go over there in August. August. Like, you already you need to come early to training camp. camp. Right. And it, it was, was it wasn't it that much money. money. It might have been like $3,000 a month. And I remember calling C.A. C C like, man, I got this deal. What you think? He said, take it. Take it. <laughs> and I, I don't know what I was thinking about, but I did not take it. I did not listen. I should have took C.A.'s advice and took the deal. But I did it. I waited. I turned it down. Because I had a workout with the Hawks to play on the summer league team. Okay. So I'm, I'm thinking, thinking, like, if I get with this Hawks, maybe I can get this D League that's coming up, and I can stay here in the States and maybe have a chance to get in the NBA. Because like like I, I, when Ben Howard, we played UCLA, Ben Howard had, had, had Joe, Jordan Farmer and Darren Collison, two right. NBA point guards. Yep. And he, he told me after the game, boy, you're a pro. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be a pro. So, like, them kind of words are staying in my mind. Like, I might have a chance to go to the league to get this. So I waited, and I got drafted in the D League. To, to go, go play, play in Bakersfield, uh, California, California Bakersfield Jam for Jim, Jim Harry. Yeah. And uh, I, really I really thought that when so I got out. Look at Jim Harry, man. That was, that, I love that dude, man. Great guy. I love, I love, I love To this day, we still talk. talk. And, and uh, I, I never forget, man, we, we had kind of like in college. college when you, you Kind of like in high school, you have college coaches come to your practices. In the D League, we have our farm teams come watch us practice. So Golden State Warriors and the Sacramento Kings were our farm teams. So they, so they would come to practice every now and then. I never forget Sacramento Kings, Kings came to a practice. practice. And our assistant coach was Big Ike Austin. You remember Big Ike yeah, Austin? Big, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. So uh, the Kings was talking to, uh, talking to us after practice. And uh, it was me, him, and Ike Austin, the Kings coach. The Kings coach said, Brian, you got you 6'4 point guard. You could be an NBA player. 
just continue work on your jump shot and work on your leadership. You got everything else. Like you are an NBA point guard. Just stay, listen to these coaches. And I never, me and Ike looking at me like, I, like after, I, after dude said that, I was like, all right. They called me Belmont. That was my nickname. He's like, all right, Belmont. All right, we're going we gonna to put that extra time in. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was, that, that, that little conversation right there did a lot for me, my confidence. You know what I mean? Coming back, back to the city, I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, I can't believe that I heard from NBA Scout. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I didn't, I didn't end up staying in the D League long because it's so political. Like, you know what I mean? It's like you really got to be a big name. So I ended up uh, getting waived, and I went to play overseas in Finland, and that was a great experience too, man. Like, fresh off the plane, I had 20 in the first game. And I'm, I'm thinking like, oh, I'm gonna kill it over here. But once again, it's just like different. Like, we had our team had signed two American point guards, so instead of me playing 30 minutes, I'm playing 15. I'm like, you see what I'm saying? So. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's how that, that's how my, my pro career went, went, man. It was it was it was quick, quick but it could have lasted a lot longer if I didn't make a decision to get into this coaching so early. Right, and I think, man, honestly, that um, in your situation, you got to be able to <clears throat> pick a road and take it. And I think you picked that road, and I, when we see it doing great things for you, you know what I mean. Um, when you thought about coaching, did you always have that in the back of your mind? And when did that jump in your mind? You know what I mean. I know for sure being the son of a coach, but when did that jump in your mind as far as, man, I, I think I can coach this. You know, I, I, I think that correlation being a point guard a lot also, but you tell me your your point of view or your perspective and when it jumped in your head that you were like, man, I might coach one day. My senior year in high school, my senior year in college, excuse me, mm, senior, yeah. uh, I had hurt my wrist my junior year in the conference tournament. I had surgery. And uh, torn ligaments. They had a scar all the way across my wrist. I didn't, couldn't shoot a jumper, couldn't bend my wrist the whole summer, that summer. So I was like doing a lot of thinking about what could happen, what would happen if I couldn't play no more? I couldn't take another jump shot. And I knew coaching was what I wanted to do if I couldn't play. Right. So that's when I really started thinking about it. And um, when, when I had the decision to make about going overseas, continue to try to play overseas or make a coaching change, I was going through some knee injuries too. My knees were always like humming, like with chronic tendonitis. Right. So I took it like as a sign, like man, maybe maybe it's time to make this move. And during that same that same mental uh, challenge that I was going through, mm-hmm. I got an offer to be a grad assistant at TSU, like the same time. And I turned it down like twice. Mm-hmm. And finally, someone said, "Boy, this is your ch- this is your chance to do something special." Right. And I I ended up taking it. Right. That's that's heavy, man. So to know that uh, that's that's crazy. I, I, it came full circle again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you jump into the coaching, you go through the college ranks. Let's jump straight to TSU. You know what I mean? Because I know you've told this story a billion times. Let's jump straight to it. You get to TSU, you get to be the coach of the university that not only you wanted to go to, but me. Uh, people that you looked up to, people that you got the opportunity to watch play from John Henderson to James Stewart to Odell, like Marcus Kenza, Dante Jones just commented a minute ago, like we all wanted to go to TSU. Like, I think, man, and that's something big, I believe, like as far as changing the culture, I think that was that was huge, man. I, I, I think that was big time a uh, hire for them. It couldn't have went any better than that. You know what I mean? What was that like? I know it definitely was a dream come true. You know what I mean? That's a dream job for uh, for you, you know what I mean? Especially early on as you are. Like, and what people don't, what I want people to know in the boom, 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 um, this is still, like, in coaching, you're still a baby in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're still learning it as you go. You know what I mean? You have a great success, but it's – to be able to, at this age, young like this, be able to come in coaching your hometown, not your hometown where you were born, but your hometown. Yep. You know what I mean? Where your name is known, you laid your roots. To be able to come back here, what's that like, man? Man, first of all, you're right. This is my hometown. I'm a Nashville. Right. I grew up. <laughs> I grew up there, but I'm in, I'm six one five all day. There it is. Okay. There it is. But to answer your question, man, like. That's really what it's about. Like to me, like I think about you, you, you mentioned a bunch of players that came from the nineties, but 
talking to people like Big Ma mm -hmm. and my dad mm -hmm. and Pound. Yeah, Al like, McLean. Shout out to Al McLean. TSU has been going through this, not getting the best guys from Nashville for a long time. Long. This, this is going back from a long time. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, like when I look at players like you and Kinzer mm -hmm. and, and guys that have, I've, I've heard them outwardly say, like, I would have loved to go to TSU. But I wanted to go to TSU myself. Right. I know how, I know how much I could have impacted the game, not, not necessarily score or whatever. I know I would have helped TSU win mm -hmm. in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. And I know that if Cooper would and would have had me as his point guard and Slay was at the foe, and I was, or Marcus Kinzer was a starting point guard and I was bagging him up, whatever. If all of us was on that team, we would have went to multiple NCAA tournaments at TSU. Right. And and TSU would be what Wichita State is right there now or whatever else. There you go. Ain't no telling what we'd be if we all would have been able to go. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, whether it be the coach not recruiting them, maybe not giving them enough attention or whatever, uh, TSU has not been able to get the top players out of the city. Right. Well, I'll be damn right. going to let that happen. Right. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I, I'm going to recruit yeah. all the top players to come from Nashville because I know for a fact we can win with guys from Nashville. You know, now am I going to be able to get every single one? No, right. But uh, and and since I'm the head coach, ultimately it's going to come down to me making a decision on player to player who I feel like I'm going to recruit. But any guy that's quote unquote getting recruited a little bit over TSU right now, I don't care who it is. I'm going we're going to get on them and we're going to make sure. That we have a lot of guys not saying TSU never recruited me. That's right. not gonna happen on my watch. Uh, you know, Marcus Fitzgerald, little Marcus. I'm extremely excited to get a. Uh, he's probably my first. Is he my first? He's my first. He's really my first Nashville. Yeah. 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 So you know, uh, hopefully this this starts something special, and, and maybe we'll get some more guys. You know, maybe the next guy will come through. And see, that's I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that you Marcus Green, my, my one of my point guards from Philly, weighing in on that, and I will be. She'll choke me if I don't say. My mom was on here watching. She said, great interview, Brian. You know what I mean? So let me just throw that out there right there. Mama Slay on here watching. You know what I mean? I'm Slay. I ain't Slay. Yeah, so um, I'm glad you put that out there. You know what I mean? Because that's a, that's a fact that a lot of people don't know. Like, this just didn't start in the 90s. This started from long, 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 long time ago. You know what I mean? Like, it was going down like that. Like, football had it in order. You know what I mean? Track was recruiting itself by who they had. But the basketball, mm -hmm. it's kind of been like this. And and for you, like Marcus just said, man, for you to have that's a great mentality. For you to have that mentality to come in and go after it, I think that changes it already. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you got Marcus Fitzgerald coming in, which was, I believe, in my opinion, one of the best players in the state. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and he showed it on every stage that he got on. So I think that's a gem that you're getting. And you went out and got him. So salute to that. Now, with him coming in, do you look at him um, kind of like yourself as far as y'all had some, y'all had these first two winning years, like you turned it around. You know what I mean? Like y'all are winning. And, and not only are you winning, y'all packing the gym. Now, that's yeah. the key. You know what I mean? That's huge. The support for them guys to look up when they run out. And they feel like by the time they get to March Madness, Oh, man, we do this all the time. This y'all ought to see the gentry. Y'all think yes. this fact, y'all ought to see the gentry center. So do you think he can come in and make an impact? You know what I mean? As far, especially being local like that. Do you look at him as a pun uh, a pun like yourself, being able to have that 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 flavor if he does the things he's supposed to do, coming in to help you guys win and have an impact? Yeah, um, you know, first of all, when I recruit, I really try to get people that I want to be around right. that I'm going to enjoy, uh, that people are like me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got to be a good person. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to be raised right. Mm -hmm. Have high basketball IQ. Um, and even though you're a good person and you've been raised right and you know, right from wrong, uh, you still can get you know some goon right. stuff too. You know right. what I'm saying? You can, you can do both. And, um, I went one time I went around the room one day and I was telling my team, you need to be the 6'1 version of me. You need to be the 6'5 shooter version of me. You need to be the 6'8 version of me. If I'm from Dayton, Ohio, then you need to be the 6'8 Penny Collins from Dayton, Ohio. You know, like, like I want them to be have my DNA. You know, 
Cause and I'm telling them like y'all can y'all don't really y'all know me as the coach, but as a player, I'll do whatever I gotta do to win. Trash fight, taking charge, rope, uh, uh loose ball, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Then after the game, I shake your hand, yes, sir, and be articulate and polished as possible. I want a team full of guys like that. Right. And uh when you're recruiting a guy like a Marcus Fisher who's got all of that, you know, there's no reason why he won't be extremely successful. Mm-hmm. And his, his success won't be uh it won't be measured off of how many points he scores, how many assists he get. You know, it's going to be the impact that he makes on time that he's here, the people that he influences. When he in the classroom, the teacher's going to say, I love that kid. Like, and because when you're done, when I go to Belmont's campus now, they don't say, hey, man, I remember when you had 20 against Lipscomb and y'all beat them and, and you had five dunks in that game. Like, nobody brings that up. Mm-hmm. They say, I love you as a person. They remember how kind of person you were. Yeah. And so when we got guys like that on our team and uh, and you get a, if you get a couple guys like that, that's, that's some good leaders. But when you get a team like that, that's when you've created a culture. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're headed to right now at TSU. And that's why I'm so excited about the group we got coming in, man. Well, we're going to be able to do some special things just from a just from a PR standpoint, just from I can walk these guys into any room and I can leave. And I know they're going to represent me well because it's 12, 15 versions of myself mm-hmm. sitting right there uh, in that room. That's big time, man. And I, I salute you for that because – and I just want to say, if I, if I can, this is my opinion, people – the Taekwon Charles that goes to Celebration High School for the Arts may not be the player that fits in that groove. So it's not a knock on you for not being recruited by it. You don't fit that groove or that coach's mindset or the shape of his team. Like he might have two of you already. He might need that, that one guy that's a nerd to come in and, you know what I mean, figure out you know what I mean? Where he's supposed to be in the corner if it's a 90 degree cut he's supposed to come off of. Or he might need that guy that's going to throw it on the rim and go get it and tomahawk dunk it. You might not be that guy. So that, that does not mean that there's no love there or anything or you're not a good player or anything like that. You just don't fit that mold. And a lot of that goes back to who the coach is. Like he just said, you have, you, the, the, coach take, the, the team takes on the DNA of the coach. So when you're not there, I want to be able to see these kids represent who I am. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's big, and I commend you on that, man. Like, And I think a lot of people need to hear that, you know what I mean? Because maybe, for instance, none of us were um, for the makeup of TSU, which I don't believe, but I'm just saying, you know, it, it, you, you never know. But this is the difference. It is somebody from the city going there. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it can't be, man, they ain't even call such and such. No, they did. You know what I mean? Or maybe your grades just didn't fit. Now, like it's a, it's a total landscape that people don't understand that you have to, as a coach, have to go through. Like y'all got GPAs got to be done. You know what I mean? Your scores got we prop forty eight is done away with. You know what I mean? Like we don't know what what it's gonna take to get in school. But you know what I mean? I, I salute you, and I can definitely see a new era coming, man. And I think you on you on you on the way. You know what I mean? And I know you are. You know what I mean? In any way I can help, and I speak for any of the old heads, like they helped us, Dante, CA, all of Mercer, everybody. I'm there. You know what I mean? You know I'm a phone call away anytime, and that's that perspective. So with that being said, what are your ideas for um, as far as like the AU landscape, how it is now, mm-hmm. how much people put into that how much people put in the high school ball? Like, give me the – the because you, when you have to go out recruiting, do you put much into going to watch a high, a high school to play high school ball? Or would you put more emphasis on going to watch a guy play AAU? Right. Um, honestly, you're going to get more bang for your buck watching AAU games because you're going to see more prospects in the building at one time. You know, it's going to be 100 teams, sometimes 200 teams on a, on a 3A weekend. And I got three or four coaches at the event. I'm going to see more there. And then the guys that I like from there, I write those guys' names down. And then I'll go watch them play with their high school team. Right. I do I, I do personally feel like it's just as important to um, to uh, to coaches, college coaches, to watch the players in AAU and in high school. And uh, NCAA did something really good this year, last year. But they're trying to get more power back to the high school coaches by doing the NCAA academies and where teams can go watch their uh, – not the college coaches can go watch them play in a designated time with their high school team 
um, in summer. So, you know, in a summer camp uh, uh, setting. So I love that, man. And being a son of a high school coach, man, I, I do feel like high school coaches need to have more power, man. And that that has gotten away. That has been one of the reasons why there's been so much scandals and stuff going on because AU coaches is jockeying for money from this U company, that U company, whatever, whatever. Back when the high school coaches say, "No, you're not going there. You're going here, or right. or whatever." It was a lot. Then the college coaches used to have to talk to the high school coaches more, and it was right. less less drama back then. So uh, but you know, I, I'm a I'm a I'm a firm believer that both are very important. And but honestly, for somebody I don't know, I would see them more at an AAU tournament than I would at high school. Because when I'm going to high school games, I'm specifically probably going to see somebody play, right. unless I'm just, unless I'm just out and about. At a, at a local game, and I'm just like, let me see who I can see in the zoo. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And somebody catches my eye on that particular game, then that that would be what it is. Now, I, I'm a listen, man. We're gonna shift gears real quick from the basketball to um the landscape of predominantly PWOs, PWUs, predominantly white universities versus HBCU. I was fortunate and I blessed to go to University of Tennessee. Love it. You know what I mean? But if I had any other say so in the world, like me and my partners always talk, man, about going to an HBCU. Like, if you were here and you got a kid here telling them about University of Tennessee or University of Dayton, whatever it may be, um, versus an HBCU, what's the difference? What's the selling point? For that, because me, I know I rent and rave all day, and I ain't even go to HBCU, but I grew up in one, and I know for a fact, do you hear me? There is nothing like it in the world. Yeah, stamp that in the boom boom room and, 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 and put that on your refrigerator as a magnet. Ain't nothing in the world like it. That's Ron Slay saying that in the boom boom room. I just like to hear from your perspective, being engulfed in it at, at Tennessee State University, what's it like? You know what I mean? What's the the perks or, or the pros for going to an HBCU? Um, you know, you yeah. ever seen the movie School Days? Yes, sir. <laughs> <You know? laughs> There's just a different level of connection that you have on an HBCU. Uh, you know, yeah, people talk about this family atmosphere and all of that, but it's really more family oriented on a, on a on an HBCU campus. A lot of HBCUs are smaller, first of all. Mm-hmm. So, when, when you, you go, go from uh, and to go in the classroom, you're not going to have, have a classroom, classroom where you have 300 students like you would at the University of Tennessee. Tennessee. You know, uh, uh, a classroom, classroom where you might go to class and you might sit in the stadium, stadium seat and sit in the back and the teacher never really know your name. Exactly. Like, there's, there's a, a personal, personal touch uh, at Tennessee, Tennessee State, State where you're going to know and she, you might even eat lunch with your professor. You know, your professor may even know your auntie somewhere down the line. You know what I mean? Like, different level, man. And, uh, you got, you got a genuine, genuine love, authentic, authentic, authentic love from throughout the campus, from the janitors to the coaching staff. You know, you may, at, at Tennessee, y'all have a, a shoot, y'all, y'all might have a, a skiing team or something, a racquetball team, or I don't know, y'all got some teams down there. And you never, ever meet the coach of that team, the wrestling coach. Well, at HBCU, you don't know every single coach because all the coaches come to the, come to the basketball games. All the coaches go to the football games. We all go to the volleyball games. I know. I, I have, have more students. students. I, I have, have volleyball uh, players, players, football players, players track, track athletes, athletes, regular students mm-hmm. that are not athletes come in my office and sit down and just tell me how their day going more than I ever have at, at any of the PWIs that I've been at. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a it's just a, a place where you feel like you just feel like you feel the love, man. Right. And like that, that's the best best part about TSU to me, man, is that of course I pour into my guys and I love my players. They know that. You know, I spend a lot of time with my players, probably more than any other head coach in the country. But man, I love it when, you know, uh I got, I got kids, kids knocking on my door. Coach Penny, what's, what's up, bro? I brought you some uh, cookies from my job. job. Like, this is, yeah. this is, I love because they just love being around us. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you don't know, we'll find out everywhere, man. man. This is, it's, it's a personal, personal touch, man. man. And any of you young fellas out there that don't have seen the movie School Days, it's, it's on, on Netflix, Netflix right now, I think. So check that out. Y'all see what the HBC life is about. You got plenty of time for it right now. Okay. Before we get out of here, I got a couple more questions for you. Tell me, um, I like to know as far as if my son is going somewhere, like he's going to your university, what's the relationship like? How important is that coach relationship? Um, 
How important is that in a in a kid's life when he's coming to your university? For example, I know I went when I went to the University of Tennessee. Um, it was plenty of times that um, I didn't see Coach Green after um, after basketball. After basketball practice was over, my first years shoot, practice was over. We was linked up with with my teammates like we had a, a bond. A couple of assistant coaches, Coach Grant, but everybody else they went home to their families. We might not hear to them. To the next day in practice, you know what I mean? It got a little better with Buzz, you know what I mean? He had us over to his house a lot more and was a little bit more involved in our everyday activities. But outside of basketball, how those relationships, how important are those relationships? And do you do that? You know what I mean? I, I just can't assume that every coach does that. Do you have yeah. relationships with your your um, student athletes outside of the basketball, outside of practice, outside of hanging the banners up? Outside of just even just the academics, you know what I mean. So I'm speaking everyday life. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would I would tell you or any any parent to, to do your research, research on the coaches you send your son to. to. What, what kind of history does, does that coach have in uh, dealing with guys, young men like, like your son? Uh, because, because a lot of times coaches, well, parents send guys to places, places where. where They've never, never even had a guy like you on their team. team. And right. guys yeah, that got uh, different, different issues, issues, and then and the, the first time there's some problems going on, they, they'll, they'll, they'll get rid of them. Mm-hmm. Or they don't, they don't, or they they don't know how to love them. They don't get rid of them. They don't know how to get the best out of them. They don't understand, you know, the mental things that go on with some of our kids' minds sometimes. And for me personally, I feel like that's my strongest point. I spend so much time with our players. When we get out of practice, I'm, I'm the last, last one to leave, leave every day. day. You know, you know I sit in the hallway. hallway. Like, like we, we eat, we eat uh, outside of practice a lot. A lot. Uh, we, we have, have a training table sometimes. Sometimes, 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 sometimes we, we don't, don't, but when we do, you know, know we'll, we'll, we'll sit out there and eat with them, talk with them, laugh, joke. You know, you know, every now and then you got to bring somebody in, tune them up. You know, they understand all of that. But you know, I think that's the most important thing that the relationship because at the end of the day, that ball's gonna stop bouncing one day. Right. And it's, it's going to be that coach that gave, gave, gave your son the values that they're going to need for the next 30 years of their life. You know, okay, you, okay, you got, got them for full, but what about the next 20, 20 with next 30? 30. Mm-hmm. And you, you got to be able to give them some, some, some values and some virtues they can cling on to and digest every day. And you know, uh, this, this generation, generation now, man, it's, it's changing. It's changing every day. And even for me being a young coach, I mean, this is my 14th year, man, coaching college basketball. Think about that, 14 years. And, and even, even now, now, I'm still, still having, having to learn and adjust to this new way of thinking. Of thinking. Uh, this, this quick mind, this, they, they get bored quick. You know, you, you got to keep things fresh. fresh. And um, I, I feel like I have a, I, I, I only, only got a master's, but I got a doctor degree, degree in dealing with that. that. I'm telling you that right now. I understand this generation. I understand the kids. And obviously, some kids get to a point where you just can't help them. You know, that's that's true too. But for me personally, man, I do whatever I can to to relate and still give me that tough love. Because ultimately, uh, they'll, they'll be able to run through the wall for you if uh, they, they know you really love them. Most definitely. So, I, I, hey, man, but I, I got one more question. And I'm going to let you get out of here so you can relax. You know what I mean? Before, I, I appreciate you spending this time in the boom boom room with us. Um, yeah, like Jason Rose just said, it's bigger than basketball. That's a coach up in Buffalo, a partner of mine that played overseas. So, um, with it being bigger than basketball, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have Coach um, Rob Lanier on who's down at Georgia State right now, who's at UT for a while, or Florida, Texas. What are yeah. what are the things that you look at, you know what I mean, when recruiting a kid? I know you, you said you look for a lot of you in, in, in that kid, but if you walk into a gym, what's some of the first things that maybe jump off the page for you? You know, I know when I'm, when I'm talking to kids, I, I'm, I'm huge on communication, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's one of the biggest things, and not the guy – if you if I look at the the stat sheet and I see, you know, he, this guy averages twenty. Okay, I know he averages twenty. What else does he do? You know, what I mean, what's some of the things that that you look for when you walk into a gym, fresh on the scene? What, what's something that catches your eye? Well, first of all, um, from a talent standpoint, it, it will change depending on what I'm looking for in that particular player. You know, what I'm saying like. I, I, would, I don't have no problem having a player on my team like a Robin. He can't shoot a lick, but he can rebound and defend and do all those things. So, talent, people ask me that all the time, like, what are you looking for? I, I know you're not asking me specifically that, but, like, people ask me what talent I'm looking for. And it, it just changes because when you put a team together, you're trying to put a puzzle together. Everybody can't do the same thing. So, I, I, I look at it, talent is one piece. That's a separate piece. But from a, from a mental standpoint, 
Uh, I want high IQ basketball players, guys that can think the game. Coming out of the timeout, you got to be able to execute this play. Yes. Uh, Gallup reports in college are extremely detailed. Uh, and you still got to do the school work too. You know, mm-hmm. we got this. We got this slogan called "Deserve to Win," and that basically means you got to be a good person. You got to be on time for stuff. You got to treat people right. So, uh, if they have a high IQ and understanding another game, that's that's where we start. Uh, secondly, obviously, what I just talked about, I want to see if they're a good teammate. Mm-hmm. Being a good person means you're a good teammate. Uh, I love to see a guy who I already know is good, who I already know I want him. I love to see him have bad games or have a couple bad moments. Because I want to see how they act when things don't go their way. Right. Because truth be told, when adversity hits, that's who you really are. You know what I mean? Because uh, everybody's great when you're blowing somebody out. When, you, when you're down 10 or you're down 20 or you just airball the shot or your coach just snapped on you, how are you responding to that? Because mm-hmm. you're playing great and then the coach says something to you, you're like, are you acting a damn fool? Or you going to the bench stomping your feet? I don't want that kid. You know what I'm saying? So uh, what kind of teammate are you? And then uh, you said a great the thing that I talk about. I got something called communication eliminates confusion. I want to see you over communicate. I like guys to over communicate. In the USA, so LeBron in practice and watch those guys, Kobe in practice. When those guys are just talking, talking, communicate is elite. That's one thing I learned. That's one thing I learned from you. You know, you you was the one of the most communicating players I've ever been around. And uh, guys that communicate are usually winners. You know what I'm saying? With the last piece. I, I, I'm not going to tell you I've never signed a guy that's coming from a, a, a lose, had a losing season, but I love to sign guys that have come from winning programs that have been around winning. Right. Because even if you go back to the step before, when things stop, start happening and they're not supposed to happen, we start losing, going on a little losing streak, lose a game here, win a game there. That guy knows how to get you back. On track because he's been around winning before. You know, mm-hmm. he's won a championship before, won a district championship before. So that winning mentality is is the last piece of it all, man. Guys that have been a part of winning and have been a part of something special, at least some type of trophy, and whether it be A or high school, I want a guy that has won before. Yeah, that's 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 big time. I think you hit it on all facets, man. Last thing before I get out of here, your son, history. Um, and salute to your wife also. I want to leave her out. But your son, history, man, has come into a, 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 a character of his own, man. Like, <laughs> like he, he, I, I see him all over, you know what I mean? I, I see him he, in the sense going viral, especially in the city, you know what I mean? You come to Tennessee State games, man, you look for history. You know what history is, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, what do you think as far as a kid growing up? Is it difficult to – kind of dodge all those rankings, you know what I mean? This as a, a, a father and coach, you know what I mean? I'm going to speak on a whole different perspective. Father and a coach, looking at your son grow up and knowing that, you know, he's around basketball all the time. It looks like he's taking a liking to it. It's fifth grade, sixth grade, too early for them to start taking on rankings. Do you shield them from that? What's your thoughts and ideas on that? Well, no disrespect to any kid that's getting ranked that, that age, or any coach that promotes it. But I think that's way too early to be talking about ranking. Uh, you know, I, you hear stories all the time about guys uh, being NBA players that are in the NBA, so they didn't start playing until 11th grade. You know what I'm saying? Like, so why why would any, you know, why would, why would it make any sense to put that kind of unwanted pressure on a kid that early? You know, fifth or sixth grade. You know, you got guys that are 6'2 in the sixth grade that don't grow no more. Right. You know, exactly. where is he right now? So, like, I don't, I don't. First of all, as a college coach, I don't put, I put zero stock into that. Uh, doesn't, doesn't sway me to be more excited about a kid one bit. If I was a middle school coach, yeah, I'd be trying to go see if I had a kid in the city that was great. I'd be trying to get him to play with me. But you know, uh, the, the, the beauty of trying to be a great coach. Especially assistant coach the guys that are usually bringing the head coach players is to be able to gauge what that guy is going to project to be, you know, down the line. And you you really can't even really see that until they get to about the junior year. You know what I'm saying? Like and, and when I'm seeing a high school kid right now, especially in this climate, that the parents got to understand in the climate that we're in right now, we already have a thousand transfers. And these transfers are are uh, they, your son may be six two, but your son's a high school kid is six two, 170 pounds. And his transfer is 6'2", 210. Right. With 60 games under his belt. <laughs> and the coach is on his fourth year of his contract, and he has to win this year. And any, any freshman that you get 
doesn't mean they won't be ready to help you win right away. Right. Okay. okay. Because, because I start the question, I don't have no problem with having a fresh start. start. Mm-hmm. But, but, but coaches play out percentages. And the chances for that 6'2", 170 high school kid versus a 6'2", 210 kid with 60 games on his belt, which kids will help you win right away? And, and I'm, I'm playing my own life, right. I'm probably over this older kid right here. And, and that's, that's happening a lot. Yeah. And the yeah. other aspect that people are, uh, don't, don't really have not been counting is the international wave has has, has become a new fad for college coaches. coaches. And a, a, a coach would take a kid from Europe who may be a little slower than a, high, than a high school American kid, but he's played two years of pro-style basketball. And he's uh, he plays some, some some of them guys play on the team. You know about that slave. They play on your team. They just don't get paid. Exactly. So um, and now those kids are starting to take more so the power five level. Those kids are starting to take scholarships too. So you have to be aggressive as a parent and pushing your kid to do you know play basketball. I, I don't ever try to push it on history. You know I love it that he asked me to go outside and shoot. Love me. Love that he asked me to go to the gym. But at this age. You know, he can play in 10 straight games and not score a point. It doesn't matter. It won't matter. Right. You know, right. uh, if it gets to the level of being a little older and understanding what matters, then we'll start taking a, little more, a lot more serious. But until they get to that high school level uh, of playing, then I wouldn't put too much stock in any ranking. That is. Hey, man. Well, me, I appreciate you coming through in the boom, boom room, man. I think it was, it, it, you, you shed a light on a lot of things that could have been on a lot of people's mind. I know. Help me in my perspective of thinking a lot. Um, and I think people, when you go back and see this, man, you'll see the love is pouring out, man. This heart's going up left and right out here on this thing, man. <laughs> a lot of love shown to you, man. And I like to to uh, echo that, man. Like, it's one thing for sure, man. I'm, I'm, I'm rocking with the UT Volunteers, but because of you, I'm, I, I'm T-T-S-S-U. <laughs> Who are you rooting for? T- <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm all in with you, you know what I mean? So, and I think I echo the sentiments of everybody in the Nashville community, you know, even on the outskirts, you know what I mean? We want to see some great things done, man. And I think you are the person who takes that love and the strides you take in the first two years and don't expect nothing, anything but great, man. And I'm going to be that support, man. I, I, I'm getting to some games this year, you know what I mean? I'm going to make sure I do, but. One thing for sure, man, is go Big Blue, and it's all because of you. You know what I mean? And that's a cool little round. That's a bar. Lito, put it in your bars. You know what I mean? What you think about that? In the no, <laughs> I, you. I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, hey, man, anything you want to leave the people with, man? Oh, uh, no, nah, you know, the main thing is, man, I just, I'm just honored that you brought me on the Boom Boom Room. Uh, I, I've been always, you already know how I feel about you as a person and as a player. And uh, you've been nothing but great to me. Always been somebody that I could call and, and ask for advice. Um, always, anytime I ask you to speak or do something for me, you've always done that. And what we're trying to do with TSU is make sure that we put ourselves in a position that we can be uh, a program that people throughout the country are scared to play. Right. We want to be somebody that when teams put us on their schedule, they, are, they know they're going to be into a battle. Right. And I want young athletes to know that Tennessee State is one of the most historic, traditional programs in the country. Mm-hmm. We've had over 20 players playing in the NBA. At one point, we had four players on the same team go to the NBA. We're the first program in the history of college basketball to win three straight national championships. We've had guys, we have two guys in the NBA right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the most, the most coveted, coveted being Robert Covington, mm-hmm. uh, and, and playing in the NBA is not the reason why you should choose TSU. Uh, TSU is a, is a is a program that is gonna try to make everybody's dreams come true, and you can be a part of some history making uh, moments, and that you'll never be forgotten for. You know, the HBC you experience is second to none, and you pay for a coaching staff that are, that's gonna go run through the wall for you, man. Uh, I'm loving that when Nashville is, is coming behind us right now. From being a last place in attendance to, to, to second. And uh, a stat that I just found out was ESPN, our ESPN game, our games on ESPN Plus. And uh, we were first with ESPN Plus views. So that means people are staying at home watching our games too. Yeah. <laughs> Catching on all platforms. <laughs> and I'm about, yeah, in OBC, we were first in OBC in, in views. So, man, I'm just, I'm just elated to be uh, as the head coach here. And uh, my dreams and what my expectations are for the program haven't even begun to come true yet. We're just on that ladder right now. 
Uh, we got big things, big things ahead, man. And I, and I just appreciate people like you giving me this platform to, to preach about it a little bit. Ain't no doubt, man. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, salute, Penny. Hey, enjoy the last dance, bro. You know what I mean? And we'll link up. We'll link up in something when this COVID, you know, this COVID, you know what I mean, is mm -hmm. out the way, and they open up the gym, baby. Yes, sir. Thank you again, man. Always, man. Appreciate you, bro. Yes, yes sir. sir. Mm -hmm. So there you have it, people. Penny Collins, man, the one and only. Straight out of Nashville. Let me get us right. There we go. My man. Yes, sir. Yeah, locked it down. So you got that, man. People, I appreciate you You tuning in to the Boom Boom Roll. Next week, next week, we're going to have the shirts go on sale, man. You can get your Boom Boom Roll with Ron Slay t-shirt. You know what I mean? Every promotion, you know. You know, you can get that. You can get that also next week. We're going to let you know. When we have our special guest, um, just just stay tuned to Facebook, Ron Slay 35, Ron Slay, Twitter and Instagram, Ron Slay 35. I really appreciate you all. If you all would do so much for me as go to the link, go to YouTube, search Ron Slay and click and subscribe. Subscribe on that. You know what I mean? So you can follow, you can follow all the interviews that... If you missed any from the uh, weeks before, you know, we had with Shamika Hosklaw, John Henderson, Ramon Foster. Um, the list goes on and on. Ashley Robinson, gracious for all of them coming through and, and, and giving some love to the Boom Boom Room. Go through there on YouTube, search Ron Slay, subscribe, and people, I will be greatly, greatly appreciative if you were to do that. This is what the screen looks like. That's what the screen looks like. You go in there and you subscribe to the channel. I, I love you for that. You know what I mean? This is the Boom Boom Room, man. You got you got Penny, little bit, Penny Collins jump in here and tell you about the HBCU, Tennessee State University, and, and the, the heights that he's taking them to. Um, we're going to get Marcus Fitzgerald on here to get his aspect, a younger perspective, um, a, a signee that's going in there to Tennessee State University. And trying to leave an impact and get them to more higher heights than they already were. You know what I mean? That's a staple of Nashville itself. You know what I mean? Winning or losing. You know what I mean? Yeah, we got Vandy, Belmont, Lipscomb, all the universities, Meharry, Fisk. But one that you always think of when you talk about Nashville is Tennessee State University. So salute to Lil Penny. Get behind him. Um, he got a great movement going. And like you heard, you heard the greats like the Dante Jones Get on here and say, man, we all want to go to TSU. And that's not a lie. Look forward to Dante getting on here real soon. I'm, you know, I'm going to hit him up. And we're going to set the date and lock it in. You know what I mean? So we got a, we got a good good cast coming up, man. I appreciate you all. The Boom Boom Room shirts. Go subscribe to YouTube. Uh, um, um, like and love and share. And I appreciate y'all, man. So, and, and, and this is how we're going out of here. Nice little cross. Oh my! What a cross over there! Oh, oh, no, he oh, oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Claiming Wake's first ACC title in more than 30 years. Children's fires and hit it.